Hi. Did you know that the ability to receive things is one of the greatest challenges for a lot of Christians, for a lot of people? We're, we like to give things away, but sometimes receiving things is a challenge for us. And one of the great themes of Christmas is how that God is willing to give himself to us for our good on our behalf. And one of the things that we keep in mind is that he gives us Jesus because he loves us so that we can believe and that we can then receive that eternal life or receive all that God wants to pour into our lives that's good. And sometimes it's hard for us to uh, believe that. Sometimes it's hard for us to receive that. And so it's a challenge for us. One of the things that we want to remind each other is that God loves us and he calls us into his presence to be a part of his presence on a regular basis pretty much every day. Not just once a week for like a Sunday, but on a regular basis every day, even every moment of every day, with the idea that we are continually transformed to be more and more, to look more and more like God, to reflect the image of Christ because we're followers of Jesus Christ. God wants to give us his perspective. God wants to change our attitude to reflect his attitude and so that we become more and more image bearers of who Jesus is and who God is. And so with all these things, God calls us to receive the gifts that he wants to give into our lives and pour into our lives. And it can be challenging for us. And why is it that many times we have this uh, challenge to receive what God wants to give us? We know that God loves us and God uh, rewards those who diligently seek him. We know that God desires to pour out his spirit uh, upon all flesh, that God calls us his children, that he loves us like a loving father. But oftentimes it seems like we get ourselves so busy or so preoccupied or so compromised maybe by sinful attitudes or behavior that we're afraid to get close to God. Kind of like if we've been bad children and we don't want uh, dad or mom to find out about we're afraid we might get punished but we forget that God knows everything um, and so but God still invites us to come into his presence why because he wants to pour out into our into our spirits for many of us it's like we want God around we want Jesus in the in the house we just don't want to go into the room where he's at all the time and that's just that's kind of motivated by fear and that's not exactly what God wants in, in mind for us at all. He wants us to know that he loves us and he cares about us. And God desires for us to be in his presence. God loves that idea of fellowship, that idea of us connecting with him, where we enter in and we are with God because uh, we know that he loves us. It's a safe, it's a loving environment to be with God, where we can come in, we can listen to God, we can talk with God, we can allow God to pour into our spirits, into our lives, where he challenges us to and encourages us to obey, where we are challenged to repent, to give up the stuff that is not good, the way we think, the way we act, the way that we behave, the way that we speak, or even maybe some of the emotions, the unforgiveness and attitudes and maybe even hatred that we hold on to. Those are things that God calls upon us to repent of. And when we come into his presence, God re gently lovingly reminds us of those things so that we can grow in God and let God fill our lives with all of his good gifts. God wants to remind us of all the great gifts that he has for us and that he wants to pour into our lives. Uh, and what, and is, these are some of the things that he wants us to receive. Uh, first, he, he reminds us of his great love for us, that God loves us with what's called an everlasting love, that, that God's love never runs out. God's love never... Uh, doesn't apply to you. God's love always is giving and always ready to pour into our lives because he loves us. And God's just that that great that he can do that. Yeah, he's not put off by what we do. Uh, that love is, is a life-changing love. That when we come into the presence of God, God is so great, he changes, he transforms our hearts and our lives to reflect him. It, it is a fresh start. It's a new day. Uh, whenever we come into God's presence and we, we, we approach him as a loving father and he forgives us of our sins and cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness and he transforms the way that we think about life and the way that we think about things. And when we put ourselves in God's presence to experience that love and be refreshed in that love, God enables other gifts into our lives as well. And there's two passages of scripture that a lot of times we point to. They're very similar. Uh, 
not surprising, it's the Apostle Paul who wrote the, these two letters. One Paul wrote to the church in Galatia, the other one he wrote to the church in Corinth. But in Galatia, he talks about that, how that, some of the gifts that God wants to have in operation in our lives uh, are called like the fruit of the Spirit. Or he identifies them that when we have God in our life, what happens is that when we come into God's presence and we receive what God wants to pour into our lives, our lives begin to change. We begin to look differently and we begin to reflect the evidence of God's presence in our lives. And they're, they're like fruit. Just like fruit that grows on a tree, you know, an apple tree produces apples. And so uh, just like that, when we have God in our lives, our lives produce a fruit that reflects the presence of God in our lives. And in Galatians 5, he talks about that there's love. That when God is at work in our hearts and our lives, not only do we experience the love of God that God has for us, which brings us great peace and great confidence, but God then gives us this love that enables us to love others that are probably hard to love. That's that agape love, that love that only comes from God and that God gives so that we can love others. Along with that gift that God gives us that we can receive that really transforms the way that we look at people and transforms the way that we, we live and the way that we interact with others. God gives us this joy, this supernatural joy that transcends this, you know, happy-go-lucky thing, but that joy that is sustainable even in the midst of difficult things. And then along with that is this thing called peace, the peace of God. And that, that transcends all understanding uh, that God provides for us. Again, that's a gift that God gives, but we can reject it and still say, stay, you know, frenzied and uncertain and just freaked out. But God provides these things, and they, they happen by coming into his presence and receiving what God pours into our lives and just basically saying, God, what, what do you want put in my life? I want to receive. Along with love, joy, peace, then comes this thing called patience. And I have been a Christian the majority of my life, and I'm still working on being good at receiving patience. Uh, I think most of the people I know are that way too. It's an ongoing, it's an ongoing gift, and so. But God gives us this gift of patience, and um, we allow God to pour into our lives. Along with patience is kindness, and goodness, and then faithfulness, and then gentleness, and then self-control. Self-control really speaks to where we're at as Christians because I can choose because I have self-control. I can choose to allow God to be active in my life, or I can choose to say, no, God, I don't. You know, all these things we receive from God as we allow God to work in our hearts, but we practice and we develop these gifts with others. And so it's not like they come in this pure form and uh, with angels singing and, you know, all these different things going on. It's just that God gives these things. He begins to grow them. It's more like fruit on a tree. They begin small. It grows larger until it's really uh, something that's very evident for people to see. And so that happens in, in conjunction in working with others. And so that's one of the great things and one of the reasons why God puts us in a fellowship called a church, a church community, so that we can work with others and we can grow with them, with them as they're growing the fruit of God in their life as well, the evidence of God in their life. And sometimes we do really well and sometimes we don't do so well. Sometimes we have to practice more in one thing than than something else. And so that's one of the great things that God does. But these are gifts that God gives us. And the question is, am I willing to let God, am I willing to receive what God wants to pour into my life? Because I have to settle down and I have to open up my life and say, God, I want you to be at work in my life. I can get busy and do other things and shut God out and just kind of have a, a peripheral Christian experience. You know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm the captain of my own ship. I'm doing my own thing. I'm not really letting God do what he wants. But God's desire is for me to come into his presence and calm down and just look to him and let God just begin to pour into my life. And however that works for you, I mean, that's, that's the way that works for me. That's the way I envision it. That's the way I kind of come into God's presence. And I just come in, and it's like I'm sitting down, and, and I say, okay, God, what, what do you want to speak into my life? And that's, that's the way, uh, it, again, my, my image works 
when I'm praying and when I'm coming into God's presence and God speaks into my life. But he has all these things he wants to pour into my life. The second portion of scripture is found in 1 Corinthians 13. It's called the love chapter. It's used, usually done at weddings and other events. But the context is, it's, it's what God gives us so that we can get along with others. That's really what it is. I mean, it's, you need to have that in marriage as well. But you also need to have these things in order to get along with others. And in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about that love is patient Love is kind. So very similar to what he uh, writes in to the church in Galatia. Love is not envious of others. And I don't know about you, but I struggle with envy. You know, I see someone has nice things. I want those nice things too. And so I have to, God, help me to not be envious. Help me to get those things, give those things to you. Get those things under control. Uh, love is not boastful or self-centered, you know where I'm thinking all about me. The, the world revolves around me. So it's about humility. Humility. God, let it humble my heart so that I might be used by you. And then the, the, the love is not proud or arrogant. Love is not rude. So I'm being considerate of others and, and thoughtful. Love is not self-seeking. Again, it's not about all about me. Love is not easily angered. And so wouldn't it be great if, if we took uh, advantage of this wonderful gift that God gives us so that our anger is under control? So that, so that I don't just go off when someone upsets me or when someone cuts me off in traffic or when something doesn't go the way I want. That God gives us this gift of self-control, this gift of not easily angered. Not being easily angered. And then another great gift that God gives us is this thing called uh, where it, love keeps no record of wrongs. The ability to let go of past offenses, present offenses, and not hold on to a grudge and let that bitter poison of resentment take root and, and begin to infect our lives. What a wonderful gift to be able to let go of the poison of being wronged so that it doesn't hurt me continually or it doesn't affect me continually. Uh, and then God says one of the benefits of love is to give people a chance again and again and again and again. And so God loves us that much. And what a great gift that is that God can give us. It says that love does not delight in evil. It means I don't, I don't tolerate evil, but instead it rejoices in truth. And so love helps clarify that which is right versus that which is wrong, that which is good from that which is bad. And what a great gift that is. And then love always protects, protects others, protects uh, God's word, God's truth. Love always trusts. So I, I, I build trust in God. I build trust and confidence in others. Love always hopes. There's always hope in the future because of Jesus Christ. And so I don't have to be fearful of what's next. I don't have to be fearful of 2021. <laughs> it's, no matter how bad 2020 has been, I don't have to be fearful of 2021. Why? Because God is with me. And God says, fear not. And so I don't have to be fearful. I may, I may struggle with the temptation to be fearful, but God brings me that confidence. Why? Because he pours into my life the assurance and the confidence that comes in knowing who he is. And then love always perseveres. It never fails. And that's why we say that God loves us continually. It's an everlasting love. God doesn't give up on you. God doesn't give up on me. God doesn't give up on anybody. Because God loves us so much. And God's gifts, when they are received by us and they're at work in us, make us into better and more gracious people. One of the great things to know about receiving gifts from God, this is not a one-time event. This is not a Christmas is it, and that's all you get, or salvation, you get one shot at salvation. This is a daily thing that God pours into our lives. If we are willing to receive, are you willing to receive what God wants to pour into your life on a regular basis? Some, day, some days, I don't have a good attitude to receive. And you know what? God still works on me to get me to a place where my attitude is right. A lot of times he'll bring someone into my life. He'll cause someone to say something. I'll read something. I'll hear something. Someone will have a casual conversation or make a casual comment, you know, and God grabs my attention somehow, some way. 
and he changes my attitude to allow me to let him get close. So it's not a one-time event. God's continually downloading new software or uploading, uh, whichever way you want to look at that. God's always wanting to make things new in my heart and in my spirit. Um, but, I, but I have to let him do it. We have to let God get close. We have to enter into his presence. And we need to say, God, help me to receive what you want to pour into my life. Help me to receive what you want me to believe, to think, to have the right attitude, the right spirit. And uh, we have to come into his presence. And so I want to ask you the question, are you willing to let put yourself in a place where you can receive what God wants to pour into your life today? And here's one way. It's not the way, it's just a way that you could do this. Maybe every morning, every evening, you know, take a few moments to quiet yourself. Uh, a lot of times for me, it's right when I go to bed or, or right when I get up or as I'm getting up in the morning. Uh, but prayerfully ask God something like this. God, speak to me. Help me to hear your voice. Confront me about stuff that maybe my attitudes are wrong or my spirit's wrong or my my behavior is, is, is not the right way. Uh, change me and make me the person that you want me to be. Challenge me. Stretch me. Help me to receive your love and everything else you want to pour into my life. And uh, anything else. And God, thanks. So that's just kind of a, a reflective prayer that, that I pray often, a version of, a version of that, uh, morning and at night. Not out of guilt, but just because I want God to be at work in my heart and my life. And I know it's real easy to get busy with the day and, and not take the time. But, but God just wants us. And he wants us to uh, not only come into his presence, but he wants us to receive what he wants to pour into our lives. Here's the thing. God wants to make us better. God wants to transform our lives. God wants to draw us closer. God wants to make us more confident, more assured, more, pe uh, more at peace. Uh, more loving, more caring, more generous, more kind, more uh, people with more self-control. God wants us to have all these things. He wants us to know him beyond a shadow of a doubt. He wants us to know him with, with great assurance. And so God loves us. And God loves you. And so today I just want to finish out by just asking the question, will you receive what God wants to pour into your life? Will you let God work in your life what's good for you? Uh, in this season, especially as we're entering into Christmas, in this season of where people are exchanging gifts and receiving and giving, will you receive what God wants to do? Now, if you've been a Christian for a while, it's really easy to, to check out and go, oh, well, I've already done that. I've checked that box. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that as a follower of God. Will you let God put something new in your life? Will you let God do something new? Will you let God stretch you in areas that maybe you don't want to go, but that God wants you to go because that's for your good? And it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And I want to encourage you to do that, to take that step. If you're not a Christian, if you're just kind of looking at this and checking it out, God wants you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love. And he invites you to come into his presence and allow him to uh, lead and guide and just overwhelm you with his wonderful love and peace and presence and confidence and assurance and all the other stuff. And you do that by praying something like this, God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Forgive me of all the garbage, wrong decisions, wrong attitudes, wrong, all that stuff. And God, help me to know that you're real. I want to know you. And I want to follow you. I want you to show me and prove yourself to me. God can do that. God can do that. And so uh, we're going to just pray right quick. And then I uh, just got a few more things at the, at the other end to just let you know about. So Father, we thank you for your love. I pray that you would just help us to receive what you want to pour into our lives. Help us, God, to allow you to just be so at work in our lives. And God, uh, stretch us and help us to let you bring into our lives all the good, all the things that you want to pour out that draws us closer to you, makes us more confident, more assured of our relationship with you. And God, for those that maybe don't know you yet, God, that they would say, Lord, come into my life. 
Help me to know you and uh, lead me and guide me in the way that I should go. Help me to know the things I need to know and bring into my life the people I need to meet that will help me grow in my relationship with you. And so God, forgive me of all the junk and garbage in my life and help me to know your great love. Help me to know Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. And if you prayed something like that, We'd love to be able to help you on your journey. Again, whether you're part of our church uh, or our church community, whether you're a Christian or not, or whether you're a new Christian, just uh, send us an email at info at snohomishfaith.com. We'll contact you, send you some information uh, appropriate to where you're at in your journey. And we'd love to be able to connect and, and uh, help you grow and uh, experience God in a more meaningful way. All you gotta do is, again, send us an email at info at snohomishfaith.com. If you like this video, would you just uh, like it on Facebook, say something nice, and then share it with somebody else that maybe might appreciate it, and we would love to connect with them as well. We wanna take a moment to say thanks, thanks to those of you who are part of our giving team. Uh, you guys have been great and consistent all the way through 2021, and we're so grateful for you. Thanks for your your financial giving, your missionary support, your support for local ministries in the area, and uh, and the church, the ministries of the church. So thanks, thanks so much, and not only in your financial giving, but also in your prayers, and just encouragement along along those lines. Again, if you need anything, just send us an email at info at snohomishfaith.com, and we'll get back to you guys. Um, You've been great, and we, are, we are so appreciate you. If you'd like to be a part of our giving team, go to our website, snohomishfaith.com, and on the homepage up in the right-hand corner, there's a little give link, and you can just click on that, and the list will come down, and it'll show you how you can, uh, again, participate um, from a distance, and uh, we'd love to engage with you. I want to let you know, too, that we will be having a uh, Christmas Eve service, uh, both online as well as in on-site, and that will be obviously Christmas Eve. And we'll be sending out some information. So be looking at your social media uh, to find the dates and times uh, and the process for all those. So we're looking forward to spending that time with you guys on Christmas Eve. So we'll look forward to it. We'd like to close out with the blessing from number six. That the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. We're praying for you guys. We want you to keep well. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next week. But in between, Merry Christmas. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.